Hey guys, Josh Spoon with The Producer's Kitchen and I'm here with a tutorial um, in Max for Live on how to parse MIDI data to make a MIDI info device. Uh, this is a part of Max for Live Madness, so if it is March 2017, don't forget to sign up to win prizes from Sonic Faction Isotonic Studios, Surreal Machines, and some stuff by me as well. So with all that said, let's get started. Okay, so we're gonna need a couple of things to make uh, the note info Max for Live device. And this is going to be based off of just a singular note. We're not getting into any complex like chords or anything like that. So if you have a single note, you want to know what the information is about it, this device will be able to help you. So the first thing we definitely need to do is go to Max MIDI Effect. We're going to open this guy up. And there's a couple of ways to kind of go about this, but we're going to keep it relatively simple. Toss that. And we're gonna need a couple of devices here, so I'm gonna get them for you. Uh, MIDI parse. We're also gonna need um, unpack. So these are our ingredients here. And then what is it? MT of F. And we're gonna need uh, live dot Number box, yes. We're gonna need four of those. Yep. Okay, get it right in the middle. There we go. Copy, copy. Okay. Cool. So that's all we need. MIDI parse. So MIDI parse is an object that will take um, raw MIDI data. See, raw MIDI data, the outlet, and will parse it into the different parts here. So we have note on and off. We have poly key pressure, uh, control changes, program changes, aftertouch, pitch bend, MIDI channel, and um, the MIDI parse MIDI event, which uh, I've used once or twice, but I don't use it much. So um, the next thing we need is the unpack. The unpack is going to take this note on, note off. If you look, it says it's a list, and inside of that list is pitch and velocity. So we need a way to get to pitch and velocity. We're going to unpack it. So if I take the inlet to, or the outlet to the inlet of unpack, it will unpack it into the two things in the list. And if I do two of these guys, I always feel like I can do kind of like a Charlie Chaplin thing with the feet, you know, with these little messages, but that's another story. All right, cool. Now let's just take a look at this and see what comes through. I'm going to save this. We're just going to do uh, MIDI, yeah, capital info, eh, let's do lowercase, MIDI info. I'm just saving it in Max for Live. Uh, MIDI effect. As you can see, I got a ton of things that I've worked on and working on, half done, completely done. All right, so what we need is a way to get some notes in here. So we're going to randomly throw in notes. Cool. All right, so I'll play this guy. We don't need an instrument. Cool. So we see right here, these are the notes. This is the velocity. And this is gonna come in handy because in the next video, we're gonna be doing something about hijacking the velocity. So we have this guy here who's unpacked the pitch and unpacked the uh, velocity here. And what we're trying to do is have a nice little thing that displays the different types of information we can get from this. So we're going to name these Note Freak, Command J, MIDI Note, and this one will be Note Number. And then this one will be velocity. 
So some of these are already spelled out for us. Let's start this guy back up. So that's velocity. You can drop that in there. This is note number. Drop that guy there. So that's changing. So now we need to get the MIDI note. And right now it's just doing numbers. But if we right click inspector, scroll down, we'll see that it says unit style. And this unit style will turn to MIDI. And then I'll just send that there. So now it's telling us exactly what note it is. And then we want to find out what the frequency is. So what we're going to do here is right click Spectre, and we're going to change this one to Hertz. So we'll just drag this outlet to this inlet here. And we'll see that this doesn't look right. 50 hertz is super low for playing A3. So we realize there's a problem here. It's sending an integer and it needs to get a frequency. So we need to drag in here is the MTOF. If I right click on this, you'll see that what it does converts a MIDI note number to a frequency. So we already have the MIDI note number. And then we can go from here to here. And it's going to give us the exact frequency. So now we see this guy's connected, but this number isn't changing. One other thing we have to do is change this range from 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz. And it should start updating. There we go. Cool. So I can get rid of these messages here. And now we have the MIDI coming out being parsed into uh, an unpack, which unpacks the list of the velocity and the note. Then we're sending these to live.number boxes to display what's actually happening. Then we can use this as a MIDI monitor. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put this in a, in a way that we can be able to see it in live. Now if I save this and I close this, it looks pretty ugly and we can't get to, we can't see any of the boxes. So what I need to do is set it up to where it will be presentable. So that's this guy right here, presentation mode. If I click that, you see everything disappears. What I have to do is select the things that I want to see in presentation mode, hold down shift, right click, add to presentation. You'll see they all have like a red, uh, glow around them. Then I'm going to go to inspector window. And then I'm going to go down to open in presentation under view. Click that. So whenever this device opens, it's going to open in presentation mode and not in uh, patcher mode. So if I click that now, just these guys show up. Oh, forgot the text. Add to presentation. Cool. Presentation mode. We can make these bigger if we want. So uh, select these. Let's see if I can do these all at one time. Inspector, and then let's actually do basic. Nope, where is it? Layout. I'm going to turn this to 16. 24? There we go. 24. 24. 
24, and 24. Cool. So these guys are a little bit bigger. Size them up, make it a little bit presentable. And now can do this guy. So some, you know, most of the time it's good to kind of know where you're going beforehand. But I forgot about this, so you'll see some of the work that you gotta do. You know, usually when people do tutorials and stuff, they make it super pretty and they're like, see, it's easy, it takes three minutes. And it doesn't always take three minutes. 16. 16. And. Come on. 16. So let's move that guy here. And you can clean it up, you guys get the idea. So I'll save this. One other thing I wanna do is go to view, set device width. I'm not gonna do that yet, but I can move over to where I want the width to be. View, set device width. And it's gonna be this size. If I wanted it to be larger, it would be, you could see it's cut off right there. If I wanted it to be larger, I'd pull it out, do the same thing. So I save, close it, and you can see right here, we've got node info. So if I threw an instrument on here or something, just so you know, like there's no trickery. These notes actually work. Everything's passing through just fine. And that's something you always wanna make sure when you make a device, always have it passing through because if you put it on the track, it could interrupt the audio or the MIDI flow. Cool, well, I hope you guys enjoyed that. I hope you learned a lot. We talked about parsing MIDI data. We talked about live number boxes. We talked about turning, um, integers into frequency. Um, we talked about a lot of stuff. So if you're still confused, definitely rewind it, go back through, um, pick through the parts that you're confused about. That's what I did when I was learning Max for Live. I watched YouTube videos as well. And I was kind of like, well, what does he mean about that? And this and that. So uh, don't be afraid to um, go back and look at it and study it. Also, don't be afraid to go to theproducerskitchen.com and sign up for Max for Live Madness. Uh, you can win prizes, as I said earlier in the video. And uh, if it's not 2017 in March, you missed it. So um, you'll have to watch the videos and then maybe just buy the stuff. Cool. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter, Facebook, the site, right here on YouTube. Subscribe. And uh, don't forget to always be creating.